Here are some ways in New Zealand that you can put $5,000 into your back pocket. Now, I made a webinar leading into the last election to try and beat both Chris's running for the Prime Minister, uh, their promises to you of how to put more money into your back pocket. And I reckon that I won. But anyway, you can be the judge of that. So if you want to find it, go and find Two Ticks You. It's a workshop, a webinar, and it's about two hours. And I put weeks and weeks and weeks of putting this together. But in this video, I'm going to give you some of the highlights so that you can get started straight away. So what I'm going to do is basically run through the slideshow that I spent weeks putting together for hundreds of Kiwis. Now thousands of people have watched it. I bet that I can find some cash for you in this but basically to start with what I said is that you want to start with your backyard so you want to at least clean up your backyard so you want to know what money you have coming in and what money you have going out we're not going to go deep into that because that's 10 minutes on its own but like I say go and watch the workshop but if you're not doing that shit then you're missing a massive step to start with but anyway this dude here Logan Donnelly he found a way to put five grand back into his back pocket because he was about to have a baby that gave him the kick up the ass of holy shit I need to really speed uh, it up in terms of sorting my finances out so he's got this cost of living guide that he put together and there's a whole PDF of comparing different power prices uh, looking at different internet providers and all these different things so that you could find uh, where you could be saving some money so search for Logan Donnelly's Kiwi Dad Cost of Living Guide if you want to have a look through that. And, oh, let me get the hell back out of here. And that will get you started, you know. And, and then at least you are looking at ways that you can save some money to start with. And then I started getting into how can we make some more money. So, you know, what about looking around your house? What's in here? What's in the garage? Facebook Marketplace, Trade Me, your personal socials can be used to sell some of these items. So sell some shit, sell some shit that you don't need and, and actually do it. Like go and get rid of the stuff that you don't use and that you don't need in your life, but it's just basically cash tied up. It's what businesses do when they buy stock. They have to sell it to turn the stock into cash. Many Kiwi people don't understand that. But Trade Me basically reckoned that most Kiwi households uh, three quarters of New Zealanders have stuff around their house that they no longer need or use and on average have 21 items each worth a combined $1,400. Even that, if you divide that by 52 weeks, that's $27 a week. That's $27 a week that you could have by you know, selling some of those things. But this is you. You know, this is you. This, oh, no, I'm too scared to do it, etc. And that's what happens to Kiwi people. They get stuck. You know, they don't want to put something on social media. I've never posted on my Facebook. Fuck, get over it. Get over it and get over yourself. You're not that important. Honestly, drop the ego and sort your finances out. Sort your shit out and get on Trade Me, Facebook Marketplace. Start selling the sneakers and stuff you don't use around the house. Um, and then, you know, you might want to make some extra cash too. So what I did, like outside of selling stuff, so I built this new income template and I showed examples of how you can make more money. So, you know, as an example, it's got some copy and paste templates there. I'm thinking about getting rid of my insert your item. I just don't use it anymore. It might be your sneakers. Insert a price like $100. Who wants them? And then people will message you, oh, bro, I'll have those sneakers. Uh, you could offer your time. I've got some time this weekend. Does anyone know someone with any short-term work they need a hand with? If you say, do you know someone? The reader or the listener or the person who sees this is going to think, oh, okay, it's not just about me. Like, do I know anybody that would need a hand over the weekend? Might be doing firewood or whatever. Uh, there's ideas around temporary rentals, helping your friends with their businesses, property maintenance. Kiwis love spending money on properties. There's all these suggestions here as well. And that's just like one template. So it's one template as part of this. And you'll find that as you keep working through this workshop, that it just goes on and on. Now, in here as well, you know, we talk about like debt traps. If you can get rid of these out of your life, then you can save the payments to buy now, pay later and stuff that you don't need to be paying. And that's money that you could be using for other areas of your life. So your goal should be to get rid of this shit and not have it because it's sucking up allocations of your future income. And like 10% of people are behind on that stuff. 12 point something percent of the credit active population in New Zealand are normally behind on their repayments. And what you do too is you, when you sign up to that stuff, you suck yourself into the marketing because you're giving over your email address and you're getting bombarded 50% off after pay day. Like, do you think they're designed for you? No, they're designed for the businesses to make heaps of cash. Around 17% of Kiwis are carrying debt through buy now, pay later services. Those figures are always changing. Uh, but one thing I did with my credit debt in time uh, back in the day is I used a balance credit transfer. And so I paid a lower or, or no interest on my debt on my credit card by moving it from one bank to the other. And then I cleared it off and never used a credit card again. But 
Uh, remember as well that there's also like the government put, uh, sorry, ASB put this together around government support. I don't know if it's still going, but let's just see if we can dig into this. And basically they had this tool on the ASB website that you could go through. Yeah, they've got it. You can basically key in the sort of situation that you've got and it will then tell you what government assistance you might be eligible for. And, you know, that might be for some of you. So, you know, ASB built that. You don't even need to do it. Um, what else do we have here? Oh, if you have school donations or any donations that you've paid, you're up for a third of those donation rebates back potentially. Heaps of rules around that, but, you know, look into it if you're a donator, especially if you're a parent or your parents, um, you know, you've got friends who are parents and they donate to their schools and a part of a school payment is often actually a donation. You can claim a third of that back. You need receipts. Uh, the school can give you receipts. You might even want to search the unclaimed money register in New Zealand and see if your name is on there. I've had hundreds of people be like, bro, thank you so much. I had no idea that this even existed. Search for the IID unclaimed money register, key in your name and see if you're owed money. Again, like these things, you know, I, this took me weeks and weeks and weeks to put all this together and I'm skimming the surface. So you have to go and do the learning. You have to go and you know, have a look at some of these things to make sure that they work uh, for you or that they apply to you, or maybe they don't, but then you jump to the next one. You could even look at getting a border if you have a property. You can um, have a border in New Zealand without being taxed on that, as long as they're a border, not a flatmate or a tenant. Again, go and research those rules. I can't cover that in 30 seconds for you, but that could be a great way to bring some income into your household, but very high level. A border is different to a flatmate or a tenant where you're providing their meals and their power and stuff like that too, but go and research those rules. You might be up for some non-taxable income if that's the ability that you've got to do. But then of course, you know, the little bitch in you comes back out, oh, I don't want someone to live with me. Man, if you're struggling financially or if you need money, you don't get to be like that you know you're not in the position to be like oh I don't really like it it is what it is this is a tough time and we've got to do some shit differently so pick it up you know I don't like how hard I have to push and how hard I have to market in my business in this recession but guess what like the recession doesn't care and I've had to do it because it's been tougher so you know we've all got to do things that we don't necessarily want to do uh, there was a COVID allowance for employees working from home, I believe it's still in existence and it's right up to $27 non-taxable from your employer. So if you work at home more than occasionally for an employer, you might be able to say to them, hey, could I look at getting this COVID-19 employment allowance and you could even get it back paid, I believe. Again, go and research that. People have done that. Your employer might not want to pay that. They might say get bent, but hey, it could be a way for your employer to pay a non-taxable component to you of $27 a week. It's a decent amount of coin. You know, then you're going to say like, oh, I don't know what to say. So, you know, I even wrote an email that people could send to their employer. Hey, employer, I know you're always interested in looking ways to support the team. So I put that in there. That's in the 2 Ticks U workshop and webinar if you want to go and find that. Um, I've even got the references to the IRD piece so you can show your employer if you did want to ask that. You might even want to ask your employer about chances of swapping out some costs of your personal life by seeing if they're happy to subsidize like your travel, vehicle, phone, internet at home, parking, clothing allowances, meal allowance. And, you know, even asking for a pay rise and thinking about how you can add value to them, not just, oh, I want more money. Give me more money. It's, co it's more expensive out there. How are you adding more value? The, your employer has the same issues in their life. They're going to respect more the people who are like, hey, here's how I think I can add some more value to this place. Is there an opportunity for me to earn more if I can do that? Well, whoa, okay, this is a little bit different. So, you know, have a think about that. Have a think about whether you can work from home to save some travel costs and whatnot. Um, but also, you know, you're too scared to ask your employer about a vehicle. Well, then just use ChatGPT and get the little bitch off your shoulder and do it, you know, get ChatGPT to write it for you. And I showed an example of that. You might want to look at a side hustle. There were 55 ideas for side hustles in here. Then you might be able to claim some of your expenses when doing that side hustle as well through uh, accounting software like Henry, for instance. Um, and then you, you know, we went into how it works to claim expenses and how you could claim a portion of your power bill, your phone bill, uh, your interest, your rent, for instance, if you're actually running you know, a business from home. And Henry, as an example, will help you navigate some of those tax deductions that you can claim. Uh, we talked about, you know, do you claim the free KiwiSaver contribution? That's $521 a year. So that's $10 a week, you know. So I'm just, I was just kicking both Chris's ass at this stage. And you can see that that amount compounded over time, you know, $520 for a 25 year old 
compounds to over $9,000 by the time they're at 65. Oh yeah, but what's that gonna be worth when they're 65? A whole lot more than somebody who doesn't do it, okay? That's the answer. Uh, you might even stack some money of your own and then invest that into a term deposit. Rates were 5.85% back then, and that was $8 a week was the impact of that after tax, investing $10,000. If you get yourself up to $50,000, you'd have $41 a week. But those rates are gonna be decreasing as the official cash rate comes back. But I was showing people how possible it actually is to beat both of Chris's promises. Now these are the skills you're gonna need to ensure that you're not relying on politicians later into your life and throughout it too, and waiting for the next promise of the election and all of this sort of stuff. And you know, you'd be like, well, I don't have $10,000, so I can't do that. Well, then maybe you get a border for a couple of years to stack the 10 grand to then get onto that. You've got to think wider, like stop looking for reasons why you can't do this stuff. Um, there's some lessons about Warren Buffett in there as well. And then basically I asked people, okay, what are your three actions? What are you actually gonna do off of the back of this? And we went through you know, a number uh, more things in this workshop and we reminded people that it's not gonna be these two, it's gonna be yourself. Like you're way more in control. When I did this, the election was still seven months away and I'm like, I can find you more cash than these two people promise you months before the election and you want to be thinking about this stuff you don't want to be relying on chris and chris they're trying to help people who are like really struggling and it's you know this this how do i put this nicely i think too many of us have fallen into a trap of thinking that like the um, the government's there to assist us like we probably shouldn't need it or we should hope that we don't need it and that it's for a different area of society when we've got all of this stuff in our back pocket it's within our ability but we're just not doing it you know and we're like waiting for someone else to come and save us it just seems silly there's there's so many excuses from people when we're one of the fifth wealthiest countries in the world there's so much wealth out there from older people and you can go and learn to transact with them for instance as well um, and one of the things you know he closed out on is not being the little bitch and basically thinking like Crash Bandicoot but I won't give away what that's all about but what I did is I went through and I did an example of Crash Bandicoot who sells 1400 bucks of unused stuff around the house they get $520 of excess utilities in the budget you know I changed power companies this year and I saved um, yeah about that and then they get rid of their buy now, pay later. They get the get KiwiSaver contributions. They ask for a non-taxable work allowance for $27 a week. It was $94, you know, $94 a week. So $4,888 a year that people were being able to put back into their back pocket before waiting for anything to change from the government. Um, so, you know, your example may not be the same, but there will always be things that you can do in your life to tidy it up. And you know you want to share those wins with people as well, and even me, and what that's what people were doing because you're going to get the like uh, things where it's you know oh that's applicable to you oh it's because you're white you're privileged you're a male you went to uni um, I'm not from where you are you're in business you can do that like people are going to tell you all this shit throughout your life, and so then you're going to grab onto that the stuff that you know, you, you're not those profiles and think, well, this can't work for me. Oh, I'm not extroverted. I could never make a YouTube video or whatever. Like, I hear all this shit all the time, but there is so much that all of us can be doing. So hopefully uh, that got you thinking. And the theme of that was two ticks you, which was basically before you get too carried away of waiting for, you know, ticking for some politician, which is all good. Like I'm all for voting and like play your role and do all that stuff. It's important. But man, like, stop forgetting to tick for yourself. There's so much that you could be doing in your own life. And hopefully that's got some examples going for you. And if you want, you can search for the Two Ticks You workshop webinar on YouTube, even a Spotify playlist of the audio or sorry, podcast of the audio, but go and watch it. Cause yeah, it, it, there's some grunty stuff in there. And I promise you, you'll be able to put money into your back pocket, get stuck and let me know how you go.